Hey guys, we are in a new series. We are in a new series tonight. Hey, how many of you all liked our uh, field day we had the other week? Anybody? Anybody? Field day, squad wars. Got to drive a golf cart. Isn't that awesome? Uh, <laughs> hey, we're in a new series. You can put that up there. It is called Ship It. Ship It. Ship It. I don't know if you guys know what this, uh, I have to like look things up. And you got, y'all, if there's like a new phrase that you guys know, let me know what it is. Um, so Ship It, for those of you who may not know, may not uh, un- understand what that is, basically, um, it's if you approve of a relationship, like let's say you're like, oh shoot, Chloe and Michael, Chloe and Pastor Mike, they're really cool. Uh, I ship that relationship, I ship it, basically it means I approve of them. Or if you think like some of your friends and they're really cute together, but like they're, they're in the friend zone or something, and like, but you, you guys, you're, you and your friends all secretly wish that they were dating, you ship it. Um, so if you don't approve of something, you don't ship it. Um, and so we're just going to be talking for the next few weeks about relationships, about um, uh, uh, friendships, different things, uh, and whether or not, like how, what, I just want to bring you guys a perspective, God's perspective on relationships, how God views marriage, how God views uh, dating, different things. And you guys really, uh, it's up to you guys to take what I say and to apply it to your lives. And um, I'm going to really just bring you the word of God, really, and then you guys can do whatever you want with that. Um, But tonight we're talking on a subject called wait on it. Look at your neighbor. Tell them wait on it. Wait on it. Wait on it. Um, So uh, I'm going to read a passage of scripture, and then we're going to go over that tonight. Isaiah 55, 10 through 11 says this. You can go ahead and put that up there on the main screen. Screen. There we go, Isaiah 55, 10 through 11. For as the rain and the snow, this is God, this is the word of God. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth. See, it takes a little bit of time for water. It doesn't, the, the rain doesn't come down. The word of God does not just come down and then, boom, it comes right back up to him. No, it says it, it goes down and it waters the earth takes time in making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. How many of you tonight, just for a second, just, y'all can, like, you all, teenagers, I've seen you devour food like crazy back there, okay? Like, I put snacks out and they are gone. So I want you to understand, I limit how many snacks I put out there because y'all would eat through the, the youth budget in like a heartbeat. So, Huh? Have you seen me? Yeah, exactly. I remember when I was a teenager, I used to take, I used to go, my, come home to my mom who would make a fresh baked cookies, like chocolate chip cookies, like just a table filled with cookies. Um, and I would just scoop up a big old handful of them, get a big glass of milk, go up to my room and read a book for the next like two hours and eat the cookies dipped in the milk. So I, I eat cookies with milk. Chloe eats cookies with water. They're really good. Anyway, you're only allowed a few cookies. Listen, I take a stack of them, okay, so I can eat. Here's what I want you to understand. There was a hunger that I would have inside of me, and so I would just go all out and grab as much of it as I could. And I want you to understand, my mom could bake a nonstop amount of cookies. Like, she was an amazing, she was Amish, okay, she grew up Amish. She can cook cookies like you would would not believe. And I had an unlimited supply of cookies. And I want you to understand tonight, as many as I could eat, That's how many I could grab. That's kind of why I have the figure I have today. But I want you to understand, I believe that in my heart, for all of you guys, God has a supply of bread for the eater, it says. That means, y'all pay attention for a second, that means... He, he, he provides bread to the eater. That means that no matter what, you can come back to God and say, I'm ready for some more. I want some more, okay? And he'll, he'll continually supply bread to the eater. Who does he not supply bread to? God does not supply bread to somebody who says, nah, I don't want it. I'm okay. I pray that every single one of you young people in this room tonight, you've come tonight. Who's come hungry? Who's come saying, I'm an eater. I'm ready to eat. And I'm telling you that if you can come to, into the house of God with a belly that is ready to be fed and say, I'm an eater. I'm ready to take whatever it is that you have to offer. God will continually supply in your life a supply of food. 
Continually. Let's go ahead and keep going. That was a little extra for you guys. That was an appetizer. Okay, so check it out. Next, sli next slide up there. Next scripture. Bread to the eater, seed to the sower. So shall my word be that goes from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty. But it shall accomplish that which I purpose. And shall seek, succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Growing up in my family, we... Um, we basically grew up uh, like Little House on the Prairie. I don't know if you ever saw that before. Little, nope, y'all had never seen Little House on the Prairie. Okay, so anyway, um, so basically we grew up like, um, like in the Amish community. I don't know if you know what that means. Basically, my parents didn't let me watch TV or uh, anything. Like we, we would like, anyway. Um, so part of being in, growing up as an Amish person, I didn't actually grow up Amish, but I was in that community. Part of growing up was that everybody planted a garden. I, you guys probably do not like plant gardens in your little subdivision houses that you live in around here. But, um, but like these gardens, we would grow corn, we would grow beans, we would grow all these different stuff, you know, and it was, it was pretty uh, boring, okay? Um, we grew tomatoes, potatoes, yams, clams. No, I'm just kidding. We didn't do all of that. So anyway, um, uh, you name it. Anyway, so check this out. We grew all of this stuff. Um, so basically, the way my life worked, there were seasons. There was the winter season. We just kind of came out of the winter season. And then there was the spring season. And then the summer season. Who's ready for summer? Who is ready for the summer season? That's what I'm talking about. See, for me, you all... You all are excited for summer. You guys are excited for summer because for you, summer means freedom. So check this out. Winter for me, winter for me was just like, it was just snowy and cold. But like at least, at least I didn't have to garden, okay? So I'm like, I'm okay with winter. I liked winter. I was going to school, but at least I didn't have to garden. When spring came around, uh, spring meant the melt, snow melted, okay? But it also meant, guess what we had to do? We had to go out into the fields, and we had to till the ground and plow them. So that was what spring meant to me. Summer for you guys meant no school, which is awesome, no school. But summer for me meant, guess what I had to do? I had to go out into the fields, into the garden, and pull up all of the weeds. And I had to clean all of the, 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 the bugs off of the plants and everything. Summer for me meant all of that. Now fall, fall meant I had to go back to school, and fall meant... I had to harvest. So there were these seasons. And I kind of liked winter season more because it meant I didn't really have to do anything. I could play. But then spring season, I'm back out there. I'm planting seeds. Summer comes along. I'm cleaning the weeds. Uh, fall comes along. Finally, we're harvesting. We're enjoying the fruits of our labor, all of that stuff. Awesome. Awesome. So just kind of explaining to you that there were these seasons that I had in my life. It was kind of cool, though, because I kind of learned, like, during the harvest season, I learned that hard work paid off. But now I'm an adult, and um, here's the thing about being an adult is that I can make the decision I don't want to do with, deal with the gardening. I don't want to have to deal with the weeds. I'm telling you, every single, every single weekend, every Saturday, my mom would come wake us up like super bright and early in the morning and be like, I'd be like, Mom, I want to sleep, okay? I don't want to be doing this right now. But she'd come in, she'd flip the lights on, she'd be like, we got to go out, and we got to pull all of the weeds. And I'm like, Mom, no, that is not happening. And then she'd be like, slap me up a little bit. And she'd be like, we are going out, and we are pulling weeds, or I'm going to tell your father. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, okay, fine. Okay, so I'd get up, and we'd go out, and we'd go out, and we'd be pulling weeds, and it's sweaty and everything. Um, and that was my weekend. But now I can make the decision and as an adult that I say, you know what, that doesn't sound very fun to me, okay? Does that sound fun? No, we, pulling all that weeds, no, that doesn't sound very fun. Having a garden, having to wait on these, these little seeds to grow and everything, it's not very fun. So what do I do? Yo, I go to Publix, okay? If I want groceries, I head on over to Publix and I pick myself up some, some uh, uh, groceries and everything. It's instant. All I have to do, all that hard work, I don't have to do any of it. I don't have to worry about all of that. It's instantaneous. All that I have to do is walk up in that joker and grab myself some corn, and I can make corn on the cob. All that I have to 
to do is walk up, and if I'm feeling really extra lazy, I go to Publix, I go to the deli, I say, hey, I want a pub sub. I want an ultimate, okay? And I want that thing with as much uh, salad dressing and all of that stuff, sub dressing, I want that thing packed out. And if I'm feeling a little extra crazy, I'll say, look, I want you to take the buffalo sauce and the chicken tenders, and I want the buffalo chicken sandwich. Boom, awesome, that thing weighs 108 pounds and I don't even care, and it's awesome. But I get it instant, instant, instantly, okay? It's instantaneous, it's super fast. It's amazing, I love it, how quick it all is because I used to have to go through the process. As a matter of fact, listen y'all, y'all don't even know nothing about being Amish because my grandparents had a chicken farm. So I've been, I grew up butchering chickens, okay? Get the whole thing, if we wanted chickens, we had to cut those jokers up, okay? So I don't, you all don't know about having to do the hard work that, behind all of the food that you eat. When I walk in and I see a chicken, I go, look, that took me about 27 minutes to do. You guys go, oh, it took me about four seconds to buy that. So anyway, so check this out. We love things instantly, to be instant. If I'm feeling like I need food, as a matter of fact, I was talking to Chloe. I'm like, yo, babe, we have not grocery shopped. That is in like a minute. Like it's been a while. I've been coming home and being hungry, and I'm like, we don't have anything here. And I just go down and I get something from one of the, you know, a gas uh, restaurant or whatever, you know, a fast food place or whatever, because it's instant. It's like just there. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to go shopping. I don't have to cook. And I, and I love it. My lifestyle while I was growing up was a little bit different. I had to, everything took work, and it all took time. As a matter of fact, you guys connect to a Wi-Fi instantly. You walk in this place and there is a guest Wi-Fi that you connect to almost just like instantly. You don't even have to work for it. And uh, growing up, you guys don't know about this, but we had to have what were called land lines where you would plug in the thing, plug, lug it, plug in the wire to your computer and then dial up. And when you dialed up, it wasn't just like, boom, I'm connected to Wi-Fi and I'm good. And now every time I walk into this house, my Wi-Fi connects to it. No, this, it was like, it was like, like five minutes straight of crazy noise for you, for you to connect to the internet. But all of this, it, it, it all took time. But we don't like taking time for anything. So I feel like in our relationships, in our relationships that we have, maybe some of you at school, like, I don't know if there are any gamers in the house, but whenever you join a server, Okay, whenever you join a server, I don't know if you've ever joined a laggy server before or know what that means. Basically, the way lag works is, check this out. Basically, the way lag works is that when, when some, everybody else might be going at one speed and they're like here, but then you, for whatever reason, because you're, you're in this laggy server or you're kind of, your internet's a little bit slow, you'll just see them like poof, poof, poof. They're like zipping across your screen, and here you are stuck here. You're like, yo, I'm not even moving. I feel like I'm at a standstill. Everybody else is moving so quickly, but here I am. I'm kind of stuck back in time here while everybody else is going off and doing their thing. And I feel like we can feel like that as Christians in our relationships. You're trying to do things God's way. You're trying to live a lifestyle that is God's way. But all of the other relationships, and you and your boyfriend, if you chose to have a boyfriend, or you and yourself, if you choose to not have a boyfriend because you're trying to be extra holy or whatever, you, 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 know, you feel like God hasn't called you to, to, to find a boyfriend yet, whatever. But everybody else seems to be going at a certain speed. Everybody else seems to be zipping ahead of you. And it feels like you're stuck back here in dial-up. Stuck back in time. You're, stuck, you're, you're having a weight on it for a while, but everybody else seems to be zipping ahead. And I can feel like, see this, this passage that we read, it says that God, for as the rain and snow fall from heaven, but do not return to there instantly. In other words, what you've been praying for, what you've been waiting on, it doesn't happen instantaneously. It says that it comes down and it waters, it waters plants, it waters seeds that are in the ground and they shoot forth. And I don't know if you guys, you guys probably don't farm that much, as a matter of fact, if you even watch a plant grow, you probably watch it in a time lapse where it's like, like, like growing quickly. Like, and it, why is it that time lapse always looks like this? Like, like, it's always creepy how it grows. Like, if you've seen a plant, it's like, it's just 
like pops out. That is not how it works, okay? I've seen them grow. I've seen it. See, because in the winter season, we're not doing anything. We're not planting anything. And then comes the, the spring season. And then we take some seeds and we slowly put them into the dirt, put them into the soil. We water them. Then summertime comes. And as summer comes, the things just start to, the rain is coming down. They're slowly coming out. Slowly. And here's what I've come to notice. It's a slow process. It takes time. And you have to wait on it. I remember when I was really young, I would plant them, and I would go out, like, all the time. I thought it was the, mo the coolest thing, planting our own garden. And I would go out all the time and check on them, like, oh, maybe it's going to grow. Or maybe you would, like, like check, you, maybe you planted something in, like, kindergarten, and, like, your teacher had you plant, I don't know, a little tree, beans, something. And you put it in the paper towels and you're growing it. And you check that thing. How often would you check that thing? You would, you, I remember I would check on those plants constantly. I'd be like every hour. Like, oh, shoot, let me check on my, like, your friends are like, hey, you want to come over? You're like, oh, man, I got to go check on my plant. I got my beans growing over here, so I can't hang out right now. So check this out. Checking, I would look at it all the time. It would take time, though. My parents always remind me, you got to wait on it for a while. It's going to take some time. It doesn't just happen instantly. It doesn't have, I feel like, man, if only it would just happen quickly. And I feel like when I pray to God and when I'm asking God for something, when I'm asking God for advice, when I wasn't dating Chloe yet, and, and, and I was like, whenever I was asking God for advice about, like, man, who should I, I'm ready to date. I feel like it's time. And God would just say, just wait on it a little while. If you try to rush the process, if you, if you just, if you try to, if I see these little, the little seed in the ground and the next day I come over and I try to harvest it, what do you think is going to happen? Nothing. I'm not going to get anything. The same is true when you pray to God. If you try to rush the process, if you think, man, I'm ready to date and you go for it, you're never going to end up with a harvest. You'll never come up with a harvest. I didn't rush things with Chloe. I'm telling you, we dated for a while, too. Like, it was, like, too long. Like, like we had a really long, like, it was, like, a, almost over a year engagement. Like, it was a while. That was kind of dumb. But you don't want to rush the process. There's no reason to rush the process. It's when you rush the process that the harvest is terminated. If you think I'm ready, I'm ready for it. I'm here to tell you just wait on it. Wait on it for a while. Wait a minute. The other thing that I kind of noticed about this passage is that as it talked about, um, later on it talks about shoots, that there were, there were weeds and brambles and in bushes and things of it like that that were growing. And I feel like the thing that would, that would happen is as the seeds were growing, as the seeds were growing and I'd be looking at them, they didn't grow by themselves, okay? The hard thing, the really tough thing that I had to deal with was as those seeds were growing, as the plants were growing, there were weeds that were growing along with it. And um, there were all these different weeds that would grow. And I don't know if you've ever had to pull weeds before. It's, you have to, like, figure out what is a weed and what is not a weed. If you've ever had flowers before or whatever, I remember I would always ask my mom, like, is this a weed or is that? And I'd be trying to figure out. You'd have to distinguish between what is a weed and what is a flower? What is a weed and what is a plant? What is, what is bad and what is good? And you're trying to figure these things out. And so you have to distinguish the, the, between the two. Because here's the thing. If you go ahead and you can take all the water you want, you can water this plant as much as you possibly want. You can put as much fertilizer on it as you possibly can. Okay? But the problem is if you try to harvest from a weed... If you try to harvest from something that's not good, it doesn't matter how much you pour, on, pour into it, you're going to have a frustration at the end of it. You'll never have a harvest. And here's the thing. If you expect to get a rose, but you've been watering a weed for a long time, you're going to be disappointed. If you've been watering the wrong person in your life, if you've been grooming the wrong relationship in your life for the longest time, it doesn't matter if it's a weed, if it's the wrong person, it doesn't how much time, it doesn't matter how much energy you spend on that person, they will never be a rose. Can you look, on, look at your neighbor? Tell them, wait on it. Wait on it. Here's the thing. I would look and I would see, do I want to take care of this? And I would wait for a while because when it's small, I'm like, oh, 
I'm not going to take too much time on, on something that's wrong. So I kind of water it for a little while. But here, check this out. The minute that I saw that it was a weed, I would stop fertilizing it. The minute that I took notice and said, you know what, I can distinguish between what is good and what is wrong. I would pluck that thing and I would say, I'm not going to deal with you any longer. The Bible talks about this. It says, test the spirits. It says, says test all things. Check or test everything. Hold fast that which, is, that which is good, but get rid of what is bad. And here's the thing. Here's where I think we get wrong in our relationships. We can, we can continue to nurture something that is bad. We can continue to nurture the, the weed and the thing that is dangerous and the thing that will choke off what is good in our life. I'm here to tell you there are things and there are people, there are, there are friendships that you have and there are dating relationships that God has been speaking to you about. And he'll help you distinguish. He'll help you distinguish which is good and which is bad. And it is up to you to say, you know what, while it's still small, while it's still just a little thing, I'm going to take this and I'm going to break it now. And I'm going to get rid of this person from my life. I'm not going to continue to nurture that. I'm not going to continue to provide fertilizer to that. But I'm going to cut it off. And here's what I've come to find in my life. See, God says that he said, sends rain down, and he sends uh, snow down, and it, and it says that, that snow waters, and the rain waters the earth, and it brings forth the shoot, and here's the thing, I've noticed, I remember Chloe and I, we used to have these, um, these plants in our, in our little back patio area, and it was a covered patio, and we had like all these uh, succulents and different things, whatever, these different plants, and they all just kind of like like, I didn't take care of them, okay? Because I'm not, like I told you, I'm done gardening for the rest of my life. So, like, we had them. They were cool right away, but they started shriveling up and dying. And I'm like, I feel kind of bad for these plants. I don't really water them. They were kind of back a little bit to the back of our patio. But I took those things, and I started scooting all of the pots out farther and farther out to the edge where every time it rained, they'd get some water. And what I noticed is that where they used to be back here and they were dying, now that I put them out farther and I pushed them out to where they could receive some sun and they could receive some water, they started growing and flourishing. They started coming back to life. And what I want you to understand from that is that whatever you feed, whatever you feed, whatever you allow to be watered, that's going to grow. But whatever you starve... That's going to begin to die. And the same is true in your life. Whatever relationship that you will feed, it will grow. Whatever sin struggle that you will feed, it will grow. But whatever you begin to starve off will die. And there are certain relationships that need to be starved off and cut off in your life. Because they're only going to bring you pain. They're only going to bring you sorrow. Here's the thing. You might think, you know what, one day this weed, you don't know this person, this guy that's been, you know, he's not a really a good guy right now. But in the future, he's, something's going to happen. No, it's not. It's not going to happen. You're not going to suddenly get a rose out of a weed. It doesn't work like that. You're not the person who can transform them because you aren't Jesus. Only God can do that. And you've got to learn how to say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull out from this person. I'm going to pull this person away from my life, and I'm not going to be the rock in their life because Jesus needs to be that person. And some of you need to do that in your lives, in your relationships. <laughs> I love that it talks about rain and snow because that signifies seasons. And there are certain seasons in you that, that are that occur in your lives. In the winter season, I loved it because it was the time that I didn't have to do anything. And there is a, there is a time where, where the planting just doesn't make any sense, and it's the winter season. And then there was the spring season, and that's when the planting should begin. And that's when, 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 it, when the, the time is ripe. And God says there is a time for everything under the sun. There is a time for you to be planting. There is a time for you to have a harvest. And then there's a season where you should just do nothing. And I feel like some of you, maybe, maybe what you're trying to, and I, I want you to understand, if I would go out during the winter in the middle of a snowstorm and try to plant something amazing, it's not going to happen. Okay, I'm going to get frostbite, all right? I'm going to come back and be hurt and broken and bruised. And here's the thing. There's a season of planting that should take place. And that, that season, that is a window of time and a window of opportunity. 
And that's the only time that you're going to be able to plant and see a harvest come. And some of you, you've been trying to plant in your winter season. You've been trying to plant a relationship in a time that you should be waiting. And here's the thing. In the winter time, you've just got to wait on it. I don't know how to explain to you relationship-wise and dating-wise, sometimes you just got to wait on it. I don't know what, what that season is going to look like to you. You've just got to, God will tell you when the time is right. But sometimes you just got to wait on it. You have to wait on it. Look at your neighbor. Just look him in the eye. Just, for, just say, just wait on it. Just encourage him for a minute. Just wait on it. Just wait on it. And I know it can be hard. See, God says that there is a harvest that I have, that I have begun. There is a, a rain that is coming. There is a harvest that is going to be happening. He says, my word is coming to you, and it will accomplish that purpose that I have set out for it to do. But you've got to wait on it, because if you try coming up uh, prematurely, if you try doing it before it's time, you're only going to have frustration. If you try say, you know what, this guy is the right one for me, and God says, no, he ain't, but you do it anyway, you're going to find a frustration. But you've got to learn how to wait on it. You've got to learn how to wait on it. The seed will only produce if it's planted in a season where the rain can soak in. See, there, every single time that we would, we would uh, plant our plants, all right, so we would have watermelons, we'd have carrots, all these different things. Carrot seeds are like little baby, little tiny, little tiny seeds. And they would have directions for how to plant them. And they would, on the packet that you would get, it would say, plant three weeks after the snow has melted in springtime or whatever, or plant four weeks before summer, like it would tell you exactly when you need to plant the, the, the seed in order for it to produce. And there were always directions. And if you planted the seed at the wrong time, it wouldn't produce a fruit. And the same is true in your relationships. The same is true in your lives. There is a correct timing. It might be the right person. It might be the right seed. But if it's at the wrong timing, then it's not going to produce. And there might be someone that you should be with. You might be, it might be, but if the timing is not correct, if you both are not ready, if the soil is not ready, then you're never going to be able to produce what you would if the soil was at the right time. Wait on it. Wait on the timing. You got to learn how to wait on it. Here's the thing, and, and, and here's, why don't you just practice for a second, practice for a second. Here, the next time that this boo, that this bae, that this relationship person comes into your life and says, you know what, I'm ready to date you. Here's what you got to do. Here, I want you to understand something for a second. Here's what you got to do. Look at your neighbor. I'm, look at your neighbor, Jess, right now. We're going to practice. Bae comes walking in. This is bae, comes walking in and says, I want to date you. You looking good. I've been looking at you for a while. You looking real nice. Here's the thing. I want you to look at him. Tell him, let me pray about it. Let me pray about it. Say, I'm going to wait on it. I'm going to wait on it. They come back. They say, did you pray about it? You say, I'm still waiting on God to answer me. I just saved all of you guys some heartache and some trouble because you're, you've learned, you're going to learn how to say, I'm waiting on God to speak to me. I'm waiting on that word. I'm waiting on that season. If you don't learn how to wait on it, you're going to ruin it. I promise every single time. Every single time you're going to ruin it. I used to have this friend, and Chloe, if you could come up for this. I used to have this friend who would, um, man, they were so good at playing pool. You know the game pool with the little cue and the ball? And they were really good at playing this game pool. And so every single time he would come, and we would be playing it, and like, um, I'd hit the ball, and it would be horrible. It was like, the, it would just be like, it would do nothing. Like, I was really bad at playing pool. And then they would be like, check this out. And they're like super skillful. They're like, they would hit it, and it would be like bing, 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 like balls bouncing. Like it would just like, it'd be bouncing everywhere. And then I'd be like, okay, the white ball would stop moving. And so I would grab the white ball get, or, you know, get, get set to do it. And he's like, yo, wait, wait on it. Wait on it. Because he would say, wait on it, because the balls were all still moving. I'm like, it's not going to do anything. Like it really, you know, have you ever played the game of pool before? And like the ball just keeps on rolling and rolling and rolling. And you're like, all right. Are you done? Like, and then you think it's done, but then suddenly it makes it somehow. And I remember I looked at my friend and he would say, wait on it. Wait on it, wait on it. He'd be smiling because he knew what he had done. He knew the motion that he had put forth and the effort that he had put forth. And he was just saying, wait on it. I know you want to go, but what I have done 
It's not yet completed. The thing that I have set forth has not come to a completion yet. Wait on it. Wait on it, because here's the thing. As soon as the ball, as soon as the white ball, as soon as the cue ball stopped, I'd be ready to go. I'm like, this is it. It's my turn. I'm going to take the shots now. I'm going to make some shots now. I'm going to do some things now. I'm going to set in motion my own plan. But he's saying, wait on it. Wait on it. And I'd be amazed every single time. The ball would be moving, and it would roll, and suddenly it would just, it would score every time. It's amazing. Blew my mind how, how I would want to start something. I would want to begin to do something. He would say, wait on it because what I have put into motion hasn't come yet to completion. And I was about to ruin what he had done by me hitting it. And the same thing will happen in your life. If you don't learn how to wait on God and allow what he has set in motion to come to a completion, you'll ruin what his plan that he had, that he had for you. If you say, you know what, God, it doesn't look like things are moving. It doesn't really look like things are moving forward in my life, in my relationships. I want to I wanna see some things. I want to see myself dating this person. I want to see some different things occurring in my life. Everybody else, they're getting to all these different bases. But here I am. I haven't done anything yet, God. And I want to I wanna start exploring. I want to start doing some things. He's saying, wait on it. Wait on it. I've got something amazing set in motion for you if you just wait on it. You need to learn how to wait on it. Wait on God's timing. He's got some amazing things and it's going to blow your mind. For the love of God, wait on it. Wait on it. Why don't you guys just bow your heads and close your eyes for just a moment. If I could only just express that to you. I, I, don't, know, I don't know how to completely get that across into your mind. But you need to learn how to wait on it. If you grab the, the wheel too fast. If you... If you say it's my turn to take some shots, you'll never be able to reap the harvest that God had already set in motion. There are seasons that occur in our lives. And it's important sometimes that it's just a season of waiting. It's a season where the shoots are beginning, beginning to sprout. But it's important as those shoots begin to sprout, as those relationships begin to grow, you need to be able to learn how to distinguish between what is good and what is bad. That takes the Spirit of God. In order to test the spirits, you have to have the Holy Spirit inside of you. If you're in this room tonight and you would just say, I want to be able to test the spirits, it's very simple. God says, ask. Ask. Ask me for the Holy Spirit and see if I won't give you that, that gift of discernment to be able to distinguish the good that needs to occur in your life. If you're here tonight and you would just say, you know what, I want to be able to tell what is good. I want to be able to tell what is bad so that in that season of my life, I know, might know what I need to be doing. If that's you in this room and you say, I just need the Holy Spirit's help. I'm not going to try to point you out or whatever. I just want you to look up at me on the count of three. One, I want to be able to know what it is that God wants me to do. Two, I'm asking. Three, look up at me. Thank you. Thank you. So many of you. So, so many of you. Why don't you guys just stand up on your feet just for just for this last. We're gonna we're gonna send you guys off tonight with a bang. But here's what I want for you guys to do tonight. If you just said that tonight, you said, you know what, I want to receive the, 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 the Spirit of God. I want to receive power to be able to see what it is that needs to be done. Why don't you just shoot your hands up right across this place right now. Go ahead, shoot them up. Shoot them up. Shoot them up. Jesus, I pray over these young people. Father, I pray that in their hearts, God, your Holy Spirit would flood in. Father, that they might be able to have eyes to see and ears to hear the word that you have sent forth. God, that they wouldn't move too quickly in anything, God. God. They wouldn't move on any relationship in their life without first coming to you, Jesus. They wouldn't move, move forward with anything until you ship it, God. It doesn't matter who, what, if their friends ship it. It doesn't matter if their parents say it's okay. But God, they would come and seek your approval first, Jesus. God, and your Holy Spirit would give them wisdom that there would be power from on high that would come inside of them, Jesus. Father, that they would obey you. God, we want more of your Holy Spirit inside of us just to do the things you have called us to do, God. So empower us tonight, Jesus. Would your Holy Spirit move? In Jesus' name. 
In Jesus' name, if you want any additional prayer, we've got leaders. Leaders, you can come forward. Make sure you find a leader and pray with them. But you guys are dismissed for tonight. Stay and worship with us. Come pray with us. But you guys all, y'all can have an awesome time. But look at your neighbor before you go. Say, sh say, say, I was going to say ship it, but say, wait on it. Say, wait on it. Say, wait on it. Wait on it. You guys are dismissed. If you need prayer, please do not leave without finding a leader and praying with them.